Okay, so hello, I'm Matthew, and this is my talk about automating homework. So, you know, he already said what I was, so I'm gonna skip that. And so, you know, there's a bit of problem of automating my homework, as he just said. So it's, this, this talk's gonna have some of that, some, some endeavors in enhancing as well, and we'll see. So first example is we had, in, in grade seven, beginning, we had to make, we had to make factor trees. They were the helpful mathematical devices. They're supposed to make finding prime factors easier. They did that, but you have to draw 50 of them because it su is supposed to reinforce the learning. It doesn't. So, you know, <laughs> so I mean, this is an example of one. It looks kind of nice. You do some repeated division and you get, and you end up with a factor tree because you prime factor supposedly. It gets a bit annoying to do like 50 of them, as I just said. So I decided to make a program to automate it. So it looks like that. It's a bit long, like a bit long for creating a tree. So I mean, it does a bunch of things. Like it creates a class for each thing, pipes it into Polydot, takes two of them, saves it to this, reopens it in Pill to create two of them, then it uses map to create another image, saving that in Pill to paste that in, uses Pill to write more text, and it's a bit overcomplicated. So I mean, you know, maybe. So if you're gonna learn one thing from this talk, maybe. It's not overcomplicate your trivial things like automating homework. Like the output looks nice, but it would have taken two hours less, one installation of an annoying dependency, and two hours of reading documentation that doesn't not, not exist if I had just made it look like that. So, you know. And now that we've got that useful bit out of the way, we can talk about making your homework more fun. So, the next thing I had to do, which is actually before that, but whatever, it was in grade six, we had to make a presentation called All About Me, which was all about you. It was a slideshow of 10 slides about yourself. You, uh, you were graded on how you could use PowerPoint, because that's apparently a difficult skill, and how well you could write things in English. But I was running Linux at the time because I had managed to bork free installations of Windows and didn't have PowerPoint. So there were some solutions to this, like fix the Windows install, use their computers, do it on a different computer, maybe you can use LibreOffice. But those are bad ideas. So, so the correct way to do it is to employ the power of this wonderful program that I've written that's in here. You may have noticed it's compiled. I lost the source code. I have to decompile it to get the source for this. But it was called the Matthew Slide System. It's, it's trademarked. And... <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, it had some features, and you could create captivating slides, you can create, eh, you can create captivating slides using the intuitive syntax of raw Python files. You wrote Python, it evaled that, and it used that to make a slideshow out of it. You could vent, you also had complete control over what it did. It evaled your code. You could define custom things to draw on the screen. So, I mean, it did work. You can get a picture of my cat as well. He's very happy to be in this presentation. And so, I mean, its insides are a little poop. Like, they're not that bad, but if the amount of dynamic magic with the Python file is input, there's a whole, there's a generous amount of execs, evals that, that could have really been done with a bunch of, of dictionaries and get adders. But, you know, the question, of course, is what mark did it get? It got a level four. Actually, wait, no, it got a level four minus because apparently writing your own program does not deserve a four plus, it deserves a four minus. <laughs> so, I mean, so, so next on the tour of crazy things I've done, we get to a thing we had called Classroom Economy, where you'd get like classroom jobs and you know, stuff like janitor, energy monitor, webmaster. I mean, I got webmaster, but you know. So the normal thing you make, you maybe make some blog or something of Weebly, I don't know, that's a bad idea. So, you know, we're gonna have to write one from scratch with Flask and just some raw SQL for fun, you know. So I mean, there were some advantages to doing this. Like you had an excuse to program in class, like who doesn't want to do that? And you could charge people fake money to, do it, to, to put fake ads on a fake website for a fake business. So, you know, <laughs> which is pretty nice. So, I mean, but it also is more fun. So, did it work? That is the question. It actually did. This was live for about two months before I, I realized no one would use it and I'd have to take it down. But, I mean, it did look kind of nice. It actually had an editor and it worked reasonably well-ish. And it had a bunch of other things, but yeah, as I said, it isn't live anymore. But what about the code? So it has a lot of code, and there's some interesting things in it. Like it used raw SQL. It just sort of took SQL and shoved stuff into it. You know, it didn't have SQL injection. I did use stored procedures, which I guess is nice. But if you got a password wrong or got a username wrong, sorry, it would it would do this to try and prevent timing attacks. So I mean, because ABCD one two four five six is a very secure password to test against. But it also had this comment at the bottom of the main file, which was, after here is debug code, not production. Blah. And I seem to remember that when I pushed this into a production server, I did not remove that comment because I was very lazy. It's also one of like, the five comments in the entire project. But I mean, it, it's a success. I saw about drumroll please, free people use it. So, you know, annoying. <laughs> people didn't like my code, but I mean, 
It also never got finished, as because the result of that is, is there's some things that say not finished. But you know, fun project, great distraction from class, or just in reality, not doing anything. So I've done my homework, so I've done my work. But the last and the best thing that came out of my endeavors in automating homework was from a project that had the best name of landscaping project, which just fills you with anticipation, I know. But we had to design a backyard out of the schoolyard. I, we think it was because our teacher wanted us, because it was supposed to be for our teacher, and I think we wanted, he wanted to imagine he had a backyard, I don't know, in the school. But you make a 3D model of it, make up of cost, you know. Of course, all I care about is the 3D model, but, you know. <laughs> so there were some choices. I could use a game like Minecraft or a model or like Blender or some sort of CAD software, but those, as you've probably worked out, are bad ideas because using a computer game for educational purposes is, that is much less fun than writing your own 3D engine from scratch like that. So, I mean, you know, it's, we end, I ended a program called 3D Landscape Model, which is the most beautiful 3D engine known to everyone. And it had some features, like it's free, unlike some of those options. All, of, all the information you put into it is in an easy format of a giant JSON file. It had a custom scripting language that was written for this because I was, in, I was experimenting with that. You know, maybe a bit too much. It had three superb kinds of geometry you could put in. You could make boxes, extrudes, or an OBJ, and that's all you need, because that's all you need, right? And a, and a collision system inspired by Super Mario 64, because that was the video I was watching when I was writing the collision code for it. So, you know, maybe, but I mean, there was a custom scripting language, which was parsed and lex in like 450 lines of code, because it seemed like a good idea at the time. It really wasn't, but, you know, s some fun comments that I found. Is like in the main file, there's a thing, it's, there's, it starts off with setting the window title. If you ever use Pygame, you do it like that to a thing to model magic, woo, spooky. And I don't know, it wasn't even Halloween. I was just evidently very bored in class. And above it has this wonderful comment, I have no clue why I did this. Oh, well, it gets better. Then it says, everybody do the setup shake next to the code that actually initializes everything. I don't know. <laughs> and I, I forgot when I was looking at the code for this to put it in a presentation, I forgot I did this and I had a bit of a laugh. But Right, right below it says, I seriously think something is wrong with me putting in all these random comments. <laughs> Previous Matthew was aware of it, he was doing something silly, and I did not add this in later. In fact, it was all in the same commit, like, in May of last year. So, I mean, you know, kind of cool. But, you know, let's actually see what it does if I run it. And this is where it could all go horribly wrong. But, let's see. This thing is such a low resolution. Let's see if it works. Okay, so it's going to try and start up here in with the magic of Pi game that takes an abnormally long amount of time to start up. Okay, there it goes. It outputs large amounts of debugging data because I thought that was cool at the time. And wait, oh, it's on my screen now. Okay, wait, cat. Oh, but wait, wait, this this is will work. Wait, there it goes. So I mean, it was actually a thing you could use, and I did actually present this in class, and it does work. It had the advantage over Minecraft of being able to show prices for things. It had this hor wonderfully untextured thing. You could also jump infinitely because I never bothered to fix that. But the scripting language, this thing, when I get near it, it'll turn into water. When I get away from it, it'll turn back into deck because that's how you turn off a hot tub. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, there, was, and there was, in fact, code that did that. Like I had a thing called changegrassdeck.txt and it uses this code, it parses it and lexes it and does all kinds of magic, but you know, it works. So yeah, you could go around. The staircase ends here because I have to define each of these boxes as a JSON element and I got kind of lazy after a while. So, and the collision system that if I increase the speed of this, you can just go through things because it uses push boxes and if you, and you go into a region that'll push you back out and if you go too fast, you break through walls and it's kind of poop. But I mean, that's, that is that. And wait, if I can get back to my, there's also no close function. You have to go back to the, edit, to the IDE and actually and send it a sig kill, otherwise it does not work because adding a event handler for close is apparently too hard. But, you know. But that is, in fact, all I have for today. So, you know, if you want to if you want to stalk me on GitHub, you can go there. And if you want to find the code, it says 30 minutes. This, that's a lie. I was going to make a repository on the train right over here. Uh, the internet did not work, so I could not pull the code down. So unfortunately, it's going to be like tomorrow when I finish it. But you know. But anyways, thank you for coming to my talk, and that is the end. Great.